Uh, the first part is mainly about the problem of alignment. So what kind of alignment problem is? The main idea is pretty simple, is that I give A, I want, I want to find a B that's really related to A, uh, that is have some similar distribution. Of course they are different, but we want to find some, uh, some relationship, because uh, let's look at this example, uh, a very simple example. A lot of problem is in image to image. Uh, take this form. Uh, the left hand, left hand, left side is the semantic mask image, and the right hand is the uh, real image from the real world. And uh, we can say that we can say that there are there are two kind of high dimensional variables. And we want to find the co-occur with certain join probability distribution. So in most cases, the goal is how to align these two. So there are another example, uh, the daytime photo and nighttime photo. So it's, uh, in some way, it will be very meaningful. Because in the nighttime photo, it's very hard to this green, this go win to to see some to see something. It's the the pixel is very hard to define. Uh, but if we can get a photo from the from the daytime, so probably we can get the photo from the nighttime. So for in the future for the automatic cars, it may be very helpful. And another example like the white black to the colorful picture, uh, basically everything we have seen are relatively trackable. We, com we completely can have, a, a, for this example, we completely can have a, a real picture and turn it into a black and white picture. Then we have uh, pairs of data. And also it's the same to the two examples that I mentioned about. Uh, also, it can happen in the text and all uh, analog. The most typical example is the language translation. Uh, in NLP, you can find that like this. The first line is uh, uh, this is Chinese and this is English. We want to use attention uh, to pair them to find the most meaningful pairs of them. And how to find this pair is always a question. So in this class, uh, we want to consider this kind of problem, this kind of problem as a distribution align problem. Uh, and all I mentioned below is kind of like the supervised distribution alignment, because just I as I mentioned, the pairs can be found uh, in the real world and we can have the both pair of data such as pics, pics to pics, text to text, image to image. However, there is still some that we cannot have the pairs of data in the real life. Uh, so let's first introduce the traditional GAN, look back, ha have a briefly recap. So again, the basic idea again is to uh, have a uh, A and want to generate it, it and get a predicted B. And if we have a pair of data, that is, we have uh, the uh, the right uh, the right label. I I mean, we can pair them together with a discriminator. And that's that we can calculate its loss in this system. Uh, it's very clear. But in many ways, we may not have this one, which means that, uh, uh, for example, there is clear clear example. Uh, for example, if we have a picture, we want to have the uh, painting of this. Uh, Obviously, it's hard to find a 
data, a pair of data, that's both a large pair of data that's both have the picture and the painting and put them tra into training. It's very hard. So sometimes we just have the uh, one data and do not have its la label. So what can I do? Uh, uh, also, it's this example is the same. So there is introduce a main idea, which is also important in this class. Uh, I call it one direction generated way. So this is just the same as what I joined above. Uh, but there is a, a little bit different. So uh, I'm sorry, the space is not enough. So we want kind of like this to compare the, so there is two generator from A to B and from B to A. So we want to compare the origin A and the, uh, uh, I don't know how to call them, maybe the next term A, the next A, the new A. Okay, we want to combine these together and compare them. And this is also the definition of uh, cycle consisting loss, which I will mention below. Uh, so. Yeah, so, so uh, then I want to mention another kind of distribution to make it more clear. It's called cycle gain. So the cycle gain is used uh, I mean, maybe like two, this kind of two direction from A to B and to A, and one other direction from B to A to B. So the structure may like this. G, F, the, both G and F are both generator. Oh, sorry. So there are another discriminator. So kind of like this. So how can we? So how how can we calculate its loss? Uh, so as just I mentioned it again, loss we maybe all of you can remember. It's kind of like execute its its expectation. Data, the original data, and and another part. Data. This is original data. So kind of like this. Uh, this is traditional gain. So in this case, how can we modify this this loss function? Uh, actually, there are two two parts of loss. Uh, we need to call the sum of them. The first is called. Uh, Generated uh, generator loss, which is also that I might, I mean this kind of the old A and the new A, the difference between them. Uh, it's very the equation is very clear. It's like this. G B A, uh, the G B A and the G A B is the generator from B to A and from A to B. So this is the first part, uh, which apart from the uh, the typical gains loss, and another part is discri discriminator loss. Uh, another part discriminator loss is the transform of of the basic gains function. I mean. You will see uh, this is from the base side. 
uh, cause you, cause as I mentioned, the cycle gain is, is, is from the two directions. So this is from B side. Uh, we consider B as the original data and calculate is a uh, discriminator function. So the main idea is kind, kind of simple. Uh, we just show in this the mar marginal matching. Uh, marginal matching is kind of like the definition of that I mentioned the, the loss function. Uh, and the PA is ideal, uh, PA is the ideal state of the distribution of B, a PB, I mean, sorry. And what, how can I calculate the creep? the PB. So this is ideal state, but of course we cannot uh, have them so specified. Uh, so the Q, so we have the QB given A. The QB given A is what? It's the generated AB, which I mentioned above. Uh, so then we have the, uh, how to say? Uh, so it's kind of like this. We want the PB is the real B and the QB is the generated uh, approximate B. So we want, we want them as, same, as, as similar as possible. This is called marginal matching. Uh, and I take it into the, into two parts. Maybe it will be more clear. So from the A side, it's using a generator and have a, uh, a generator uh, approximate B and use another generator. Uh, the F is also a generator and it gets another A. And from B side is is basically the same. So it's kind of like this. So, uh, so you will see, you will ask how to how to calculate its loss. Uh, maybe I can draw in in another way because uh, this is A's training set, and from the original one, you train a new B, right? Uh, sorry. Train a new B, uh, this one. And then you from a B, from a, uh, from a generator, to, you're using a generator, you train a new A, this one. So this may be, th this, uh, in practice, they must be different, but we want they be the same. Uh, so this this distance caused the cycle cycle consistency loss. Uh, uh, it's oh, this graph is very vivid. Maybe you can you you need to remember this because all we discuss are below may be more complex. This is very basic graph, a very vivid, because it's turned around in a kind of like a circle and find itself different from itself. So the main idea of cycle consistency is, is to calculate the difference. So this is the cycle consistency, uh, the A, uh, the equation here, the A is the, the A is new A, and the A is the A is new A, and the A is old A. So they want to compare them. So from both sides, from A side and from B side. Uh, So this is unsupervised align principle using cycle gain. 
and we can find here uh, the two the two parts of loss. Uh, one is marginal margin loss, and another is cycle consistency loss. Uh, marginal margin loss is 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 kind of like the V of gain, but but is using a little bit different because uh, I see uh, so the the G A uh, the G X the X is the A and the Y is the B you can imagine uh, the G A is uh, approximate B uh, approximate Y I mean so it's it's very simple, like the basic uh, GANs loss function, and the cycle consistent is also basically just basically just the same as I mentioned. It's just compare the the original one and the new one from a term of a circle. So the total loss, maybe I need to write uh, the total loss in in uh, in in one term is. Uh, this is the loss from the y side, and maybe the tot total loss is need to the loss matching uh, mar uh, marginal matching from y side uh, marginal margin from y side and the marginal margin from x side, and the circle margin from y side and the circle margin from x side. Uh, of course, this equation is is already summed now. So that equation in terms of the features of the equation. Yeah, yeah, this part. The loss of the gas and the loss of the cycle consistency, right? Uh, so you just add both loss together. Uh, no, the second equation is is the is one part of loss called cycle consistency loss, but. It's the cycle consistent is all loss of x and of y, right. both x and y. Right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so. I mean, um, maybe these two parts, maybe two parts. One, yeah, it, 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 is this one? one. It is yeah. together. It's one. Yeah, right. So the top one is also the same two terms, right? Uh, the top one is just from the y side, cause, cause it's it, it's oh, it's it's. it's, it's yeah, it's it's just this term. You can do the same thing with x and y. Yeah, you just replace x with y on both. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 correct. Uh, then so there is a couple, uh, numerical results. Uh, the first uh table you can see is from photo to semantic mask. Uh, photos, to, uh, that is photo to label. Uh, we can image it. Uh, just the first example I mentioned, you have a colorful picture and you want to get the corresponding sem semantic mask. Uh, we can find that uh, the pixel to pixel is, is supervised way. Uh, that is give its label and uh, that is give the to uh, give a pair uh, to kind of data. So it's a supervised way that is, it's basically a upper bound on the performance, and we can find that the circle gain, uh, the circle gain is, uh, is 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 quite high. It it can be uh, it can be competitive accuracy with a supervised way because it's unsupervised way. Oh, and uh, the IOU. Uh, actually, I don't quite know this, but I to check it. It's also a kind of judging indicator. And the second table is uh, is compare different structure of cycle gain itself, because you can see there have just a uh, cycle gain just have forward cycle, and just found backward uh, cycle, and the 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 whole cycle gain. Uh, so it's definitely we find that the cycle gain so is 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 pretty high, but uh, it's very confusing that the back the backward cycle is pretty low. Uh, I I don't know why, but it's just pretty low. Zero point zero one. 
So the, the first table, the first result is, is pretty interesting. That we find that uh, the site, uh, oh, th th this is oh, all I mentioned, the two results is from the photo to label, that is from the colorful photo to the semantic mask. And the second one is from the label to photo. And it's very interesting that we find that the only have forward circle have the best performance. The circle again is 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 worse a little bit worse than it. Uh, I don't quite accept. I guess probably the backward circle because you know uh, you image. Uh, the left hand is the semantic mask, the right hand is the colorful photo. If, you, if I give you a semantic mask, maybe you are not sure. The, uh, maybe you can generate different, a lot of different kind of uh, real photo. But if I give you a real photo, maybe you can just generate only one semantic mask. Maybe, I, I guess maybe is this is this the reason the backward circle may take some uncertainty to the system. So in this, so in this result, maybe the, maybe, maybe worse using a whole again. Uh, and there is another trick I want to mention, because uh, it's used FCN, which is a convolutional neural network, because we cannot evaluate how well the real photo be generated. So might be using a neural network, another kind of neural network to estimate it. So the, there is image input, output, input, output. We can see it's, it's generated pretty well. And this is age mask picture. And uh, of course, and cycle gain can generate different season, different color, uh, even different by uh, space spices. I mean, but but it still have some folio case uh, like this, because uh, you know, you cycle gain maybe it's more likely to to just find some uh, yellowish pattern uh, like the horse the horse into the normal horse into zebra, maybe it tend to find, just find some yellowish pattern and change it into stribal. So maybe uh, this man putting, maybe <laughs> change it all <laughs> together. Uh, the cycle again is pretty useful from now on, uh, but, we, but it can still be improved furthermore, uh, which is a little bit complex in from now because uh, we can uh, use another kind of variables uh, also kind of distribution called z the new the new variable uh, so so the mapping of all the projection is a z to b and uh, and b z to a so the, the, the system structure is kind of like this. ZA, uh, ZB. So what the ZB and ZA stand for? ZB and uh, ZB and ZA, uh, that is Z, store the characteristic of other parts that have not been acquired. Uh, to give a directly, a direct example, for example, uh, there are two person, uh, uh, for example, me, uh, I and me. We discuss the definition of beauty. Of course, we have different definition of beauty, but we want to know each, the other, uh, what's definition of beauty from main side. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, from you since, just simple cycle again. Maybe it's kind of like that. I give a picture to Min and ask, is, this, is she beautiful? Min told me no. Uh, then I change another picture to them. Uh, but if, I, if there is another observer to 
they, they know all the picture I have and compare the picture I give to Ming and all the picture I have uh, in my pocket, maybe. They can compare them and, and tell them, maybe you can choose uh, beauty with bigger eyes or longer hair, maybe. So maybe it's, it may be much efficient. So this is the ZA and the ZB stand for. It's, it stores the characteristic that's, that's, that the B haven't acquired some feature from A. Uh, so the so the process is like this. Uh, so uh, there are still the red, red. Green, yellow, and blue are the you can consider as is uh, you consider it as timestamp. So first, first, uh, we we generated the the approximate B using again uh, using a generator. I'm sorry, it's a generator used uh, using Z B and A. Oh, maybe generate A B, and uh, this is this process, and then we generated the Z approximate Z A uh, using an encoder to compare. That is to compare these two, the uh, old A and the generate generated B, to compare these two. That is uh, to say, generator A to B, uh, they already have one, but we want to extract some future that we still want from A, but maybe lost in this round. So we store it in ZA. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Oh, the encoder function, I uh, actually I don't quite know, but they can compare them in some way. And then, then the backwards, uh, to, to get a new A by the generator B to A, using the new B and new Z A. And, and also B store the difference between A and B. So, so then we can have, oh, of course, the Z is distri a distribution, so we need to have a discriminator for, for Z. Uh, this for sure. So then we can have the loss function already. Uh, the first one is uh, is all uh, is also the a, a side and B side. The first one is the cycle consisting cycle consistent loss, which I mentioned above, of A. Uh, that is calculates differentiation of new A and the old A, and uh, and. And 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 all of this equation is 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 the same like what I write. Uh, so. Uh, so the discrete. Uh, so there is no discriminator for Z A. Maybe I can write here. Uh, uh, oh no no no! I'm sorry. The loss the loss of discriminator Z A. Uh, Z A is belong to the distribution Z A and log B Z A Z A, which is also quite similar to the to the typical function. E one minus 
D-A-Z-A. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, maybe you cannot dis discrimination. Uh, kind of like this, it's very simple. So the loss, the loss of the A. So the total loss. You can say we need, first we need the marginal, uh, marginal matching loss of, of B. And the marginal matching loss of A and the marginal matching loss of Z A and and Z B also and the same the circle consistency of all of these three high dimension variable all of have cycle consistency level there are also four four parts so this is total loss. Uh, actually, this is pretty useful because we add another uh, other to this this distribution uh, that is variables called z uh, can be a noise in some experiments, and the the noise can be very useful because using different z you can cope with different results. Uh, uh, the first example is not typical. Uh, the second example is to uh, that is maybe from B to A to B, A to B to A. Also, this is the compare experiment. Uh, maybe you can find that. Oh, maybe someone may ask if I turned A to B, how can I have the same color of 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 the old A from a just semantic mask. Uh, maybe you cannot see it, but there are color info that's stored in the picture, semantic mask. And the cycle again. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, the, it's a new one. It's just one, two. Uh, no, maybe you can look at this experiment. It's, it, it's, it, it, it's more clear. It's just uh, how to say. Just so both of them have that uh, noise Yeah, may, they definitely have 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 Z because this is augmentation cycle again. Of course, they, they are have Z, but it's not typical in this in this. Experiment. Experiment. Maybe you can look at this experiment. It's it, it, it's more typical, because uh, you know from this is a we generated a photo, for example, a photo to a mask, and then with different z, we may have different results. Uh, that is clear, and we can see that the augmentation cycle can have very strong. Uh, duration, because 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 you know with different z, but there are black one and the white one. If in last round uh, we put a black uh, white one in uh, as the a, and next round we want using z to generate as a black one, because you know black and white are the totally two end of spectrum. So. Uh, so the L, L so the L one loss may be maybe huge, pretty huge, but it can still perform very well. So it's very surprising. So the second M is to have C with the old M instead of repeating the same Uh yeah, it's it, it, it's not performance that well. Uh actually I quite I, I don't quite know this kind of cycle again. I just consider it as a compare ex experiment. <laughs> So you, so you can see it, it, it not generated very well with different Z. Yeah, yeah. With different Z, they, they still generated some same thing. Yes, yes, one to one mapping. Correct. And this is the this is to do some step with different with, with different Z. They can the shoes can have different texture and interesting. 
I don't know what's going to happen. They probably don't need the last name to be added. The surname of the first author, and then they go by the brand. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Uh, and so far, so far we have two last principles, one called marginal matching and one called cycle consistency. Uh, no matter whether I joined uh, New Z or not, we both have two kind of loss, uh, a kind of loss. Yeah, I mean. Uh, so maybe future, if you uh, if you are, if you are interested in this, maybe you can find if there are another kind of loss principle can be extracted from from the from data from the comparison. I, I don't know. So there is another example called NLP example that is also very typical. So I'll give you an English sentence and a French sentence. They might have uh, they may they might have same universal frequency, but but meanwhile they may have a totally different different meaning. Uh, oh oh sorry sorry I I, I make it wrong. Uh, it, it it's unlikely. All I say is it's unlikely. It's unlikely to have a sentence that's have the same frequency, but the meaning is totally different. It's, it, it seems very unlikely. So basic, based this kind of principle, we want to find, oh, let's have just a brief recap of what to work. So that mentioned in last few class, I, I remember. Uh, oh, the, the main idea of the word to vac is to trying to do this is to give you a word in a sentence. Uh, so you want to find another word more likely to occur in the same time with this word. In practice, uh, we won't sum them all. So we use the negative sample to optimize this. Uh, but essentially, the end result of certain factors that describes if two vectors are close together in the vector space. And we can look at this example. So we will find that very interesting. So this is country and its capital. The vector are very, look very uh, similar. The direction, the direction of vector. So maybe uh, uh, someone, 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 someone think maybe it, it, it the direction maybe it makes sense. The vector calculus maybe can have help for the language translation if we have a lot of pairs. Uh, this is also example. So we can find that uh, the right one is Italian, I guess. Uh, the next one is English, and they want to align them. Uh, if you, you, oh, all I mentioned is just word, not sentence. We want to mention the, I want to mention the align alignment of word. So, so they want align them, based based the uh, uh, vector calculus. Uh, this is a. Uh, uh, this ammunition in the video, but for example, <coughs> for example, someone finds that uh, you need, in some experience, you just need to do a rotation. Uh, for example, this is the English cat. Uh, uh, I don't recognize it, but maybe it's the meaning also the cat. Uh, maybe you just need to rotate it into another vector space, they will be the same. Uh, and, and, he, and, and he's correct. Maybe you can find in this paper. 
is correct. So maybe you just need to always want all you need to do is to train a uh, rotation matrix to make sure the alignment is correct. Uh, oh, and and in this one, I forgot to mention. In this one, it's a supervised way. Uh, that is, uh, you can imagine that, uh, like the Chinese, English, and French. That a lot of people use this. Maybe it's 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 many, it's many. Uh, it, it makes sense have a lot of corpus, uh, one to one vector that is data and label for you to train it. But there are still some other small small range language that maybe thousands of people use it. It's, it's very uh, senseless for some commercial use to, to size the data and the label. So maybe use this way, you can just give them a little, a little range of uh, data and label, a few one, maybe Maybe it's kind of like semi super super, super supervised way, and uh, and let them try to align them together, themselves together, and this one is unsupervised way. This paper is unsupervised way. Uh, oh, the the last is the results. Uh, you can see it's, it's it looks pretty good. So. So that is all I want to mention about alignment. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, question? I want I make it clear. So the basic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. I think it's interesting. We end up with this lecture, which is actually about the, the, the same ECD lecture, right? So um, that, that did the second half of the talk. Uh, I hope you watch the video. The, the, the second half of the video is really good. Yes. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that talk. Like a keynote at a, at a radio conference. It's very exciting. So um, <laughs> we'll try our best. <laughs> but I think the slides are really good. Uh, nice. Something's not mentioned like in the slide by the CL. So it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so I will start. Okay. Okay. So um hi, uh this is lecture 9B. Uh it's a uh, guest lecture with uh Afrosh. And then Afrosh is um some very important person in uh uh Machine learning. He has a Wikipedia article. That's how I know it's important. Uh, so uh, the title of this talk is called "The Revolution Will Not Be Supervised." And the way he framed it was that uh, we have this um, revolution from uh, supervised learning to unsupervised learning, uh, and it was so popular. I think Yen Lekan was the first guy who mentioned this, and then the quote became so popular that you can now buy it on T-shirts, which is why there's a T-shirt over here. So the outline is so so the, the main takeaways from, from his talk is that labels are bad. Um data more data is good and so we want to use uh, supervision of data with data. So the, it comes to inspiration of self-supervision. So life is good in deep land, no need to code anymore for any given problem, just label some training data, define an objective function, train a neural network, and then sell your startup for millions. So um, so image classification, 80% plus correct. Uh, might, we have, we can predict mites, we can predict anything we want. Um, yeah, so this is image net challenge with uh, 1,000 object classes. Uh, we have automatic image captioning, um, a pot of broccoli on a stove, group of people posing for a picture on a ski lift. So we are done. La.
like machine learning is soft, right? No, like we, are, we are not. So this picture shows a car parked on the side of the road. Um, it's, it's, it's a reasonable prediction, a reasonable uh, automatic caption. But so are all these. All these are also um, labeled as a car park on the side of the road. So, um, so, so can I ask a question? How many have not watched the video? How many have watched the video? Okay, thanks. Just, just wanted to check that. Yeah. yeah. Um, just to note, there's a cat over here. Oh, cute! Oh, I didn't notice. Yeah, it's a giant cat. It's still labeled as a car park on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, this is a car park on the side of the road. Um, this as well. Yeah. Um, so the performance on the image net is about 80%. Uh, yeah, 80%, but the performance in the real world is about 30%. Um, so like the t-shirt class image net is like the model answer, the model pictures for t-shirt. But in t-shirt in the real world is, is something like this. It's quite hard to show, um, like, so, so this is a t-shirt, this is a t-shirt, 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 t-shirt. It's, it's quite hard to show, quite hard to learn from, from this image. So classifiers love to cheat. Um, so given an image, uh, you give you a label, call it, you, you, you learn, um, uh, so if, if, you, if you give it another image, something like this, and then you also uh, predict as call it. So So the idea is that, um, we want, uh, um, if we think about the idea of uh, mach uh, deep learning in general, we want the model to be able to understand what a brain does. So a lot of the, to put it into context, a lot of what he says in the first, I think, half of the lecture is about thinking back to like the, the origins of, mach of deep learning and why, why, why do you want to train a model. So we, we sort of intuitively understand that the previous thing is a dog because we've seen dogs before, but uh, somehow um, the model is not learning uh, what we call correctly like the textures of the it's it rather what it's learning is it's learning the textures of like the fur and uh, facial textures so so that when we see this we kind of know it's a dog but it's definitely not a dog over here but somehow the model sort of identifies it as a dog so that's kind of like the whole gist of the yeah what he's saying I can draw some links to how this actually shows um, it's weak against adversarial attacks. So like um, uh, because the boundaries are, are so vaguely defined, um, uh, adversarial it's, it's not robust to adversarial attacks either. Like just just a small this is, this is a lot of um perturbations. But if just small perturbation can 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 mislead the classifier. Um. So okay. So for this um. We want, we're now not talking about image recognition, but rather video recognition or rather the uh, action recognition. So uh, when we have a video, we want the model to ask, uh, to, to, to learn what sort of action is performing in the video. So let's say you have a video of a, of a person opening the fridge and then we sort of like uh, uh, train the model so that it identifies ah, that's uh, opening a fridge. But when you actually break down the video into individual frames and then we try to test the model, is this an open fridge? Is this an open fridge? It turns out that um, the important frame that is um, uh, uh, that is actually important for that model is actually the frame of an open fridge. So that 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 kind of like uh, frames the, the 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 difference between what is expect what we think the model is supposed to be doing versus what the model is actually doing. So what the model is actually doing is just identifying an open fridge with shelves and stuff rather than the action of opening uh, uh, a bridge.
So uh, direct semantic supervision is uh, can be harmful because the, the data set bias won't go away. Uh, data is finite. Machine learning people don't care. <laughs> Need to make better use of the data we have. So um, direct supervision essentially means like memorization of, of uh, it can lead to memorization of, of the data, the training data. So um, by so so if we don't have if we use if we don't have direct semantic supervision. Uh, we can make the computer study harder. So what that means is that, okay, let, let me just illustrate the problem with, with this example. So let's say we want to use words to understand pictures. So um, this is trying to show why labels are bad, kind of. Uh, so if we use words to understand this picture, we, we can show it like this, a sky flag banner, all this kind of stuff. Um, but then when we remove the picture, can can an artist say from these labels, uh, uh, paint out something, uh, paint, paint, paint back the picture basically. So there's a lot of information loss. Um, yeah, so the visual world is, is, is not one-to-one -one, uh, mapped to words and a lot is unnamed. Yeah, so these two pictures, one, one is Paris, the other one is Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, so both are cities, they are labeled as cities, but they are quite different. Actually, not much is similar in this picture. There's, uh, uh, it was mentioned, the buildings don't look the same, the windows don't look the same, there's water bodies, <laughs> the, the skies perhaps look kind of similar, but the clouds, you, you don't really see these clouds in the other place. So, uh, but then uh, when, when we label the data, we are labeling it as cities, it's, it's, it's quite hard for the model to learn what as a face of city. Oh, so uh, I think the whole idea of that, that thing about labeling is uh, leading up to the idea of the language bottleneck. So um, Afros gets a bit um, 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 edgy here and says that um, basically language is a problem. So, so he says, oh, because uh, image paints a thousand words, but the problem is that there is a bottleneck in the model, uh, and the bot and the bottleneck is language in and of itself. So if we say a word sitting, all of this corresponds to sitting, right? So like, how how do you expect a model to sort of understand that everything here is sitting? Uh, it's technically impossible uh, until you like hence the bottleneck, right? So uh, if you go to the next slide, then oh, there's another slide that's missing. Oh, okay. So uh. If you give it some context, so for example, this person is sitting on a mat. So if you give a picture of a mat, then you sort of know that this person is uh, sitting on a mat and uh, this person is working on a computer. Uh, we sort of know it because we're humans, right? But how do we expect the, 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 the model to learn it based on just like the word sitting? So like the whole idea is that language is a bottleneck and labels are bad. So why do we categorize um, in, in terms of labels? Uh, so, so for example, when we see, the, uh, when we see this tiger, um, the next time we see uh, the, this tiger, uh, we want to be able to predict accordingly. But the next time, we want it to be able to generalize knowledge transfer to another type of tiger, all tigers. So um, that's why we categorize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, classical view of categories, um, Plato and Aristotle. Um, uh, categories are defined by lists of properties shared by all elements in the category. Category membership is binary. Every member in the category is equal. So this is uh, limited because humans don't. Okay, let, let me just show this again. Um, so, uh, it's, it's it's not that simple. Uh, 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 a category. Uh, this item belongs in this category, but not in a category. So people don't rely on abstract definitions or lists of shared properties. So, um, for example, uh, we want to define the property shared by games. So, if we if we label this group of things games, what is the common shared property? It's very difficult to um, identify the properties for games. Um, so the challenge given was identify a property that is shared by all games and shared, not shared by all non-games. Yeah. So, so why is a game? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, chicken is a bird, but when we think of birds, right? Uh, we think of like eagle, pigeon, for some reason. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So it's also language dependent. So women, fire, and dangerous things is it, it, a, a category <laughs> um, in this uh, Australian Aboriginal language. So it doesn't work even in human defined domains. So like uh, we define what a planet is, we, uh, we define what Pluto is, but we still uh, can't come to a consensus whether Pluto is a planet or not. So a possible solution is a hierarchy. So um, certain shared uh, properties uh, we can map out into um, what's that yeah, yeah. So this is still problematic because a car seat is a chair, a chair is a furniture, but a car seat is not a furniture. Yeah. Or, or rather, like you won't generally associate car seat with furniture because when you go to a furniture shop, you can buy car seat. Yeah. Right. So, uh, it's a, it's, it's a, it's not a tree. It's a forest. Um, yeah. So it's, it's not like one, one, one main uh root and then branch out to um, branch out. Uh, but it's more like many, many trees from like. Yeah. yeah. And also sometimes the concepts that the 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 you can't really discretize into labels per se uh, is is um is a spectrum uh. so context as well everything depends on everything else this one is interesting um what do you think this rectangle thing is oh, what, yeah those are <laughs> watch it's just just a guess yeah it's a it's a car good <laughs> So why is this a car? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, why? Yeah, yeah. why is this a car? Do you go back? Yeah. 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 So uh, that thing, right? Yeah. That thing is a road. Very good. So, because it's on the road. So why is this a road? <laughs> 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 it's not that it's a building. Mm. Yeah. So so you get the point. So um. So a lot of the labels are actually based on context. Uh, yeah. So categorization is, is, is the point of it is like to make decisions early. So okay. So, so I, I think this slide uh, might make more sense, uh, the dictatorship of librarians. So uh, we sort of passed this onerous task of classifying everything to librarians. So for every single book that a person has written or Basically, every single noun or thing, we sort of ask the li librarian, hey, uh, could you classify this noun? So a, a librarian will say, okay, a uh, chicken is a bird, a car seat is a um, chair, and chair is furniture. So there's this like uh, classification uh, of, of trees going on. Uh, so like we now pass the task from uh, machine learning practitioners to librarians. So librarians have a dicta dictatorship over like classification categories so somewhere in the amazon store if you take a look uh, at every single book there's a certain category to a book so who decides on these categories uh librarians yeah and also another thing to note is that books uh, don't just belong in one category it belongs in multiple yeah. categories so um like some bookstores are designed such that they put the same book in, in different sections of the bookstore so, um yeah uh, i can't remember this so, so I think this is some history context where uh, Yahoo was, uh, basically it was at the time where Google was trying, Yahoo was trying to buy over Google for $3 billion. Uh, and the way Yahoo searched for things is uh, it searched uh, categorically. So it looked at no, uh, root, root node and then like which category is this A, B or C and then look at that root node and then which category. So it, it, it has a sort of tree classification of basically every single thing that it could search for. But then Google was like, screw it, uh, we're not going to go for uh, categories, we're just going to search through the entire text and uh, we know who won. La. <laughs> this, I think this is re just referring back to knowledge transfer or like generalization of, of tiger, the, the labels. So association instead of categorization. So we want to ask what it, we don't want to ask what is this, we want to ask what is this like. So something like shared properties, but more like some, some, some scale, some spectrum. Yeah, so. Thank you. So 
so uh, this one is quite interesting. So um, uh, when th this is referring to the number of uh, training data, uh, so when we have small amount of data, we want to do the ex extrapolate and generalize. Uh, but we have big amount of data, we want to be able to interpolate uh, between the, the training data. So uh, some say that we are currently at the small amount of data and we can extrapolate, but um, he, the, he, the speaker yeah. argued that we are somewhere here. Um, that's because um, we are still not be able to generalize that well. That's, that's, I think, a, that's I think, a key takeaway, I think. Yeah. I think. I think, like, partially his main argument was also that you could basically get infinite data as of now because it's so easy to just attach a camera to a uh, computer and then just record data. So, uh, technically speaking, you could have possibly infinite training data. So, the, the whole uh, uh, state of where machine learning is right now is uh, how do you interpolate? So, so given a certain um, uh, picture, like uh, the whole problem from extrapolation becomes interpolation. Yeah. So, so um, uh, he he draws uh, this slide. He draws a a a, a, a parallel to to. Uh, how our brains work. So how do you, how 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 do we identify tigers, right? How do you know that that thing over there that's orange and has spots is a tiger, even though you've never encountered it before? Because we 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 interpolate, right? But uh, if but the underlying assumption that we uh, uh sorry no we extrapolate the underlying the underlying assumption of extrapolation is that we have um. Uh, the environment is changing. So if the environment does not change, then it becomes an interpolation problem. And uh, with interpolation, uh, brain date lookup, uh, which means that instead of brains, we just have a lookup table. So we look at uh, a whole list of data and then we just look for the nearest neighbor. It will work surprisingly well. So um, I'm not sure where it's going with the <laughs> argument actually. We kind of just like, yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay. So this is uh, uh, so this is uh. So so he's trying. I I think the main gist of this argument is that uh, we should rethink the entire of deep learning to say instead of complaining that we don't have data, we should complain that we have too much data, because it's so easy to get uh lots of tiny images. And uh, so he, he's trying to make a point that, okay, uh, the standard uh, image data set that we have uh, other than ImageNet is CIFA 10. And CIFA 10 is a very, very small subset of this uh, 80 million tiny images uh, larger data set. So, so, so why are we complaining that we don't have data? We do have a lot of data. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, right, okay, yeah, so this one. I think, so this is kind of like the same point. Lah. It's like saying, uh, if we have enough data, then uh, we don't even have to train the model. Just do a simple nearest neighbor lookup. Yeah. So uh, this is saying, uh, so we uh, remove a certain subset of the image, and then we ask the model to draw it back. Right, so how do you draw this back? And then we train it on like uh, 2 million Flickr images. And then uh, yeah, these are the results. Yeah, this, this, this image is pretty cool. This one is generated by Model, is it? These are other examples. So we cut this out. Um, they train the model to generate it back. So again, he goes back to the same argument. Why does this model work so well? 
uh, because we have uh, too, a lot of data. So if you take nearest neighbors from a collection of 20,000 images, uh, bearing in mind that 20,000 images is not a lot, then you notice that the nearest neighbors don't actually make sense at all. Uh, but if you expand your data set from 20,000 images to uh, 20 million images by a factor of like 1,000, uh, oh, okay, well, by a factor of 100, then what happens is your nearest neighbors look pretty similar to what's happening, uh, which again goes for his argument that uh, it's not the idea that we need to have get more data. We do have a lot of data already. Is this just more so I think so, yeah. <laughs> Let me go through this first. Yeah, I don't remember this as well. So uh same point again, I think. Uh, so let's say you uh, dump it lots of data, then uh, basically to do any sort of uh, 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 learning, uh, we just do a stupid algorithm uh, like nearest neighbor lookup or something. And it, uh, uh, from a layman's level, it looks unreasonably effective because the nearest neighbor lookup looks so similar to what, to, to, to what um, uh, we want it to expect. Yeah, so there's, there's it's leading up to a, a, a experiment that they, they, they tried with the audience to show the unreasonable effectiveness. So the brain can't remember this much, right? Um, so what's the capacity of visual long-term memory? Uh, so what we know is about 10,000 images, 53% recognition. People can remember thousands of images. What we don't know are what people are remembering for each item. So specifically, um, the item, what properties does it have? Uh, yeah, so we just, so according to standing, I'll just read this out. Basically, my recollection is that we just separated the pictures into distinct thematic categories, cars, animals, single person, two people, plants, etc. Only a few slides were selected which fell into each category and they were visually distinct. Yeah, so, so there's this, um, they showed 14 observers, 2,500 categorically unique objects one at a time, three seconds each. Uh, yeah, so they wanted to test for whether or not the, the person could remember uh, that they have seen the image before. Yeah, so... Yeah, so like if, if it's com it, it can be completely different objects, it can be different exemplars of the same kind of object, it can be different states of the same object. But you have to be able to differentiate it. Yeah, so detect exact repeats anywhere in the stream. So if if you have seen the image, so I'll I'll show a sequence of images. You have seen it before. Uh clap lah, basically. Is there a way to change it? Yeah, like the, the, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you have to start when you see the same thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I think they're going to show the images. Is there any way to like... Are you going to show the images? Um, we, we can do the images, but is there a way to... Oh, video. We just go video. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a way to perform something that you have seen before. Okay. So this way, what we're going to do is we're going to you're going to clap when you have seen an image that you have seen before. Okay. And this is a nice little uh, 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 way to to, uh, to to relax too. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Very good. Okay. Okay. 
ich denn? <laughs> okay, so I didn't make you do it for a five and a half hours. This is, so they, they, they made them do this for five and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, I can't it. Okay, so now, uh, which one did you see? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so okay, never mind, fine. So the green one, the green box one are the answers. So this one should show you the video as well. Uh, yeah. So basically, even though these two looks very similar, uh, uh, the audience is able to uh, identify that the one on the left is the one that they have seen before. This is, they can correctly identify B is the one they have seen before as well. Yeah, so these uh, are the examples of the state memory test. So, um, for novel objects, they have a 92% uh, uh, percent correct. For exemplar and state, uh, how many percent do you think that uh, they have? Perform. Okay. So, yeah. So, so the 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 question is we let's say that novel we have ninety two percent accuracy. So let's say that we have exemplars and state nouns, which means that we are exposed to the to different kinds of the same type of images. Uh can you give an uh uh estimation of how well the audience performed? So you think that the exemplars and states perform very much worse than the novel ones, right? But in fact, they were about eighty-eight and eighty-seven percent, which is quite close to the to distinguishing between novel objects. Yeah. So the story so far is that semantic labels are bad because they lead to like the neural networks cheating, memorizing, uh, rigid and loss of expressivity. Um, data is good. And so how can we use all the ML stuff without the semantics? So some tricks are self-supervision. Um, yeah, self-supervision, meta-supervision means... Um, anyone? Yeah, and, and there's curiosity, intrinsic motivation. This is for reinforcement learning. Uh, uh, to explore the state space. Yeah, so it incentivizes general learning. Yeah. Oh yeah, so in NLP, um, this is uh, where we use the context as the supervision. So um, each uh, word, uh, what's the probability that uh, is in that context of the, um, the words beside it? Oh yeah, so now we have um, these two images. Uh, yeah, so given that this image is in this position in the image, where do you think this image lies in? Yeah, it's, it's, at, it's at B, so yeah. Um, so we, we know that um, uh, the top, this one refers to, uh, represents the top of the bus based on buses that we've seen before. And then the wheels on the bus won't be right in front of the bus. 
So we know it's not like um, an A. Yeah. So the relative position task. Um, So, so yeah, it's, 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 it is the same. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's, it's just trying to play the. Uh, it's actually very close to two weeks back. So, so I think the basic idea is just that uh, uh, it makes sense to use self to self supervision because apparently this very dumb task of uh, doing classification. So the dumb the dumb task. Uh, the task is done in that we, it reduces the entire context of the problem to a uh, eight-way classification, which to be honest is pretty simple if you think about all the math. But somehow this sort of way of training the model to self-supervise based on the data, based on training it on the eight-way classification problem can lead to uh, magic. And this magic is like, uh, you know, if you uh, 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 give it some, some, some input, uh, it can... Uh, do um, it can generate it can generalize pretty well. Yeah. So another way of, of self supervision is is um, like uh, getting sources from multiple modes. So um, so in, instead of just having a like an image of a cow um, a, a supervised for another image of a cow, we can have say image and a word or image with audio. Yeah, this one they show the audio. Okay, so what 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 this is doing is uh we have the visual representation of what's happening, and then we want the model to be able to uh um, match the video to the audio. So we have the audio representation which is on the right and then we use, uh, I don't know, we bash them together and then uh, try to make it identify that uh, certain parts correspond to uh, uh, the same like white hair color there. This is, I think this one is probably more. So this one is quite hard to map a move to this this video. Basically, that, that's that's the main idea. I don't think you will see this one. I think maybe we'll show this. So you, you can't map uh, the car sounds to the video either. Let's do this. <laughs> in the previous video is that we shifted the audio representation and the video representation by a bit. So there's basically a lag or a leak. La. And then what happens is uh, with this sort of uh, uh, what we call time shifted pairs, uh, uh, can the model sort of uh, learn, learn that, that, that uh, uh, a certain uh, area of that picture corresponds to making that sound. So I think the result will make more sense. Let me show the result. Yeah, so, so uh, the entire idea is that with this self-supervised training, uh, it is able to visualize the location of sound sources. So what does it mean is that the model can sort of say, hey, uh, even like the person is playing the xylophone and then this person it hits the xylophone at that area in the video and is able to say that, okay, this is the one that's making uh, the noise. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we, we can create a map. And so basically, uh, yeah, so yeah, that just shows that um, 
uh, they correlate the sounds with, with the specific parts of the video. Well, I'm able to show to the rest of the world.
think that our stationary are not making sound just because we've never really observed a lot of these things. So it's learning that hypothesis. Who, uh, sorry, who wanted to? I think part of it is because the, the fake and real pairing, where they put completely different soundtracks from other videos, that was too easy a task. It did not allow it to kind of localize where the sound was coming from. It just, you know, because the whole video could be the source for the sound that is not a correct pairing. What you want is to be able to know where in the video, I mean, spatially on the screen, the sound is. So they said the real samples are actually correctly aligned, and the fake samples are the case where I use some type of sound trick, right? So there's no audio and visual correspondence, right? So that's just to sharp uh, to make the negative instances more discriminatory, right? It's a harder case to test because you still have to dilate the sound. It's just not correctly fit in the time or the the, the time frame, the, the whatever they're calling. on the image and then how it sounds in the audio, right? Like if you train this properly, you could show a picture of this and then you could ask the system, what does it sound like, right? On the other hand, you could do it the other way around, right? You could say, song, okay, what's happening? Right? You could go on the other way and ask the person to generate the music, right? And that's basically what it's doing. They're basically showing you what they see activation map, where is the system saying to pay attention? Uh, which part of the image is responsible for the audio and the music? Yeah. Heat map. Heat, heat map is, yeah, what they show on the, the overlay, right? Like you saw the basketball video. That's the heat map of where the system is saying the lighting is Yeah, so the key idea is if it's a supervised problem, like we, we would have the video and then the labels would be the heat map. But we don't have the labels, the, the heat map labels. So it, we frame it in terms of a self supervised um, um, problem. And by correlating the, the, this aligned versus not aligned thing, um, we can just take the activation map. And then that is actually like a byproduct, but then um, it, it can localize the the parts of the video where the sounds are created. When you think about this, this makes a lot of sense. I mean, nobody told you that a xylophone sounds that way, right? You didn't go to some musician and say, okay, demonstrate what it comes that sounds like, what a system sounds like. But you in fact can infer this, right, by looking at the observations on our label data. That's exactly what the systems do. So, you know, like, like uh, Ben said, you know, if you had supervision, you'd have to go pick out lots of clips where there's somebody playing xylophone playing. And these are all examples of things that you have to do. So if you can structure your task in a self-supervised way, this is pretty good, right? You're basically using the inherent information inside of the data itself. This is why earlier there was a slide that says, you know, don't do supervision, do self-supervision. Learn constraints from your data rather than use the data label to learn, right? Use the constraining factor that only certain contexts are visible, right? We see this in word spec too, right? In NLP applications, when we're first when we're talking about word embedding, you know, you don't see the word docker with every word in the, in the English language. Like probably you have to see it in uh, IMS um, daily very often, right? Uh, or uh, page. Probably you see it with more sometimes than more than that, right? So those types of things, if you're, you're using the supervision, this uh, self-similarity within the data to create the yeah. You mentioned that this is quite interesting to think about this, uh, this uh, thing, but you, you mentioned you looked at the results. They have a website where you click on the results. You can actually see, especially like when you go back to the shopping mode example, right? Maybe the shopping mode, video, shopping mode, video. 
Hey, some of it. So, so if sound, if movement equals sound, then why isn't the waves yeah. making sound? Show to the rest of the world the unshakable Japan US alliance. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank so I think this is the result. That's the source separation, right? That means they had the full audio. They were able to pick up just this music, right? Why source signal separation? If you talk to anyone in the signal processing community, it cannot be done, okay? Right now, nobody knows how to do it, but it can be done without supervision, without any human Line signal separation. That means if you listen to a recording of some scene, they cannot, uh, current technology cannot pick up what is each part, right? So, like, say, uh, right now, if you listen to a music track, those music tracks are produced by a mixer, right? The mixer is mixed like 32 tracks together, right? Right now, we have no way, you know, aside from this stuff that's going on in the music lab, to uncompile that. Take it all out into its component track. But that's what they're doing here, right? There's this, uh, you know, you heard the speaker, right? There was a female uh, speaker plus Shinzo Abe plus some other male voice, right? And they're basically being able to pick this out just because of the you know, alignment between the video media and the audio. Yeah. So 
And you, you will see, you are saying that that really should be done for the health of the city. If I don't give the video, I just give the audio and input. I think you're at this part where what Neil said is quite clear. The picture here is just not being understood. Okay? And what I mean is that people in the signal processing domain have not figured out this technology yet. Okay? But of course, people with deep neural networks are sort of like ahead of the game, right? And these, this group in Berkeley in particular, they're really keen on self decision. They see it everywhere, okay? And it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Like if we took a look at the beginning of this lecture series, right? We saw the, the, the case uh, given, right? To say that supervision data is really tiny, right? Self -super, uh, semi supervised is more, but unsupervised data, there's lots out there, right? It could be anything of unsupervised learning. It, you know, basically have tons of data there, right? So that's what they're saying. Look at all those hours of YouTube. Not, nobody's annotating it, right? But if you can use that, exploit that data, you can do tremendous things. And that's what they're saying, right? So if we we're going to figure out why it's worth separation, don't wait for an engineer to figure out, you know, MFCC, blah, 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 all the signal processing platforms that we're like, okay? Just use unsupervised learning. Because, you know, you and I, have learned to do blind source separation all the time. We do it constantly. Uh, we do it all the time, right? Like the air conditioner is on, there's the background buzz from the TV and my voice, you know, other things like that. But we can separate all those things, right? But the computers currently cannot. But we're 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 sort of already there in one part of the field, but not quite there. Is just an open quote. So this one is maybe the high here, right? And then you couldn't get yourself. Yeah. So this is the source of the high uh, the field the guy or this is uh it's just an oh, example. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So uh so we've seen this example before, right? Uh, so the idea is again self supervision. So we take uh, the the data in its original modality, which is a color image. We hide some data from it, which is the color channels uh, of the image, and then we ask it to uh, do auto encoding, self, uh, self supervision on each other. So what happens is uh, within the LAB color space, we can split. Uh, uh, we can split an image into the L channel and the AB channel. Uh, they they correspond to each other. So um, and then what happened after that? Uh, yeah, we we've seen this example before. Yeah. So so the idea is that the model is able to colorize images. So this is uh automatic uh image colorizer, which is already technology that we can, which is already state of the art that we can use. Yeah, so um, I think the question over here is, is there some sort of semantics that's going on within the bottleneck of the, of the auto, auto encoder? Uh, so why is this semantics, uh, which is like the whole thing? And then he points to this example of instructive failure. So why is this image a failure of the model? Everything below the nose is pink, uh, but is that a good sign or a bad sign? So the way he argues it, it's a good sign, right? Because the model is learning from images of dogs because images of dogs generally have their tongues out. So now it's saying that, okay, now I'm given this black image. I want to colorize it. I'll just take everything that's below the mouth and color it, and color it as, as, as its tongue. So it's technically, he, he argues that it's not a failure. Even though we see it as a failure, it's actually a good sign that the model is learning based on self-supervision. Like it, it learns to... to Identify the nose. So that's, that's the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. key benefit. Yeah, I so yeah. What I mean, I think to me, by structural failure, is this is a failure to say that we are going to fix it. Right? So it's saying that uh, you know, it's actually capturing some semantics as well. Right? Because there's other 
understand that the world is not good. Right? But it's not always correct, right? Like we know that it's a topic of the time. Probably that part is not bad that that's the best way to start. Right? So probably that's not so likely. So this incorrect is not right. So the next stage is that okay, can I learn some higher representation? Can I learn a representation of the time, right? And then say if the time is present, then how is it going? But right now it's not being right? it doesn't have any understanding of this stuff. It's just looking at the entire image of the right. So if you take a layer that's in the in between, so we're trying to try to figure out like what is the spatial area, what is the area of the image that 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 identifies it as a face. Uh, we're basically able to identify uh, faces. So his I think his claim is that models already can uh, sort of get higher level semantics that. This is a dog's face, this is a face, this is a flower. Yeah, so like if, if it's a supervised problem, right, we would need to have like labels uh, that highlight the specific face, the, the x, y, coordinates, and everything. Uh, so we don't have that kind of data, but if we do it in a self-supervised problem, uh, it, it is automatically done. So that's, that's showing another uh, example of how self framing as a self-supervised problem can achieve this kind of um, tasks. 